Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, revealing five easy steps to win in any football game. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And thanks as always for making us your first listen. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you once again as we are making our way through the most electric podcasting open week in the nation. (laughs) The verdict is in. We've heard from not just the nation, but the world. And that's a true statement. So we're going to put it on a plaque. I'll have yours to you shortly. A couple more things to get into here today. Uh, Yesterday, we talked about a Big 12 title contender category and whether Texas Tech was in that race or out of place halfway through the season. And we basically decided... Hey, maybe check back with us November 3rd after a pair of key road games and we'll have a better answer as to whether or not Tech is a contender. And I sort of want to get to something similar on today's episode coming up in just a moment. Doesn't relate to title contention, but does kind of relate to a national relevancy radar and a top 25 poll. Texas Tech just now kind of sneaking their way into a receiving votes category. Are the Red Raiders being ignored or is there more to be earned before they would deserve inclusion there. We'll get to that coming up in just a moment, but I've also got great news for any aspiring football coach out there. Maybe you're already a football coach, but you aspire to be better. We have got five easy steps to win in a football game to outline here today. We'll take a look at some numbers across the football bowl subdivision and how that applies to Texas Tech through the first six games. I'll go ahead and throw them on the screen here, Chris, but uh, you sent these to me earlier today and I thought they were really, really interesting to consider because uh, there are a few keys within every football game, but maybe it's not quite what you would think. So let me run these down really quickly. Again, five steps to winning a college football game. Teams that outrush their opponent, 326 and 81, you're winning 80% of the time. Teams that outpass their opponent, 273 and 136, you're winning 67% of the time. If you score first, 305 and 104. You're winning 75% of the time. If you lead at the halftime break, 329 and 57, you're winning 85% of the time. If you win the turnover battle, you're 234 and 69 across the FBS this year, you're winning 77% of the time. If you are lucky enough to do all five of those things, look at that sparkling record 96 (laughs) and two. You're winning 98% of your ball games, Chris. This was really fascinating to take in. We'll get to what Tech has done or not done in these categories so far this year in just a moment. But I uh, was curious to see maybe how this sat with you, given what we all have, and that's some uh, you know presupposed things coming into a ball game. what we think is important. How'd this line up with uh, sort of the way that you view that heading into each weekend? Well, y- you know, what, what, what piqued my interest here – as it related to, to some of these numbers, I, I guess I closely started to pay attention to the score first and the lead at half categories. Yeah. And, and, and the reason is because we, you, you always talk about, you, you know, rushing and passing. And I mean, it, it's an obvious on the take three, the turnover battle and all those things. And it goes without saying that if you're doing all these things, you're probably just working people over, but the, the score first and lead at half thing got me to, to thinking of how Joey and, and the staff, they've kind of changed their mind a bit on how they used to operate in recent weeks even. And so that's what I paid attention to, you know, one of the first things when I when I heard about these, these numbers and started looking at them and thinking about them and was asked about them. It's, what, 74% of the time score first, but then lead at half 85% of the time. I mean, those are... That's a massive figure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it really is. Uh, and and I, I think I think about you know just this past weekend, you know, like you were you were going to be leading at halftime, but then you had ended up with a, a two score, 
you know, lead at 18 to three. Uh, but I wouldn't have thought that that is locking you into winning 85% of the time. Uh, whenever, just if you, even if you have a one point lead, that's, that's pretty, and that's a significant body of work. I mean, that's, that's all the, uh, all, all of these games at, at the division one level to this point this year. Uh, and it's, I mean, this is some hard and fast data that because you, you, you're taking the ball to start these games, you're winning the toss or you're losing the toss. And it's like the other team defers and you get the ball, which is what you were going to do anyway. Uh, and, and that's that's a difference of of when I think Joey was always a defer guy, you know, um, and I think you're seeing that the score first 75 percent of the time get the chance to build yourself a lead and and whether you call it hang on or, or make the other team play play from behind, um, I think that there's something very real to that. And I've been fascinated in recent weeks that they have chosen to take the ball first. Not that it always works out, but because the, the the thought is is if if it if it works out that way, you can kind of control the end of the first half and the beginning of the second if the possessions work out like that. Um, and it's always one of those things where the other team gets the ball in the second half. You're like, oh, geez, you know, don't want to let them double up here. Right. But taking it first, there's coaches that would argue you're, you're, you're theoretically guaranteeing yourself an extra possession in this game if you win the toss. Now, whether it, it exactly works out like that or not, and then, the, you know, the Red Raiders went three and out uh, the first possession last, last week after – after winning the toss, but they, they scored, I think it was the second possession uh, that they scored on. I think that's right. And so, you know, I, anyway, it's, it's kind of fascinating to see this, but when you see these numbers and hear these numbers, it's wild to me. Um, <laughs> Cause th- these are pretty stark uh, differences. I mean, so looking at it that way, like if you don't score first, you're going to, you're going to only win 26% of the time. And when you look at it that way, you're like, right. damn, I better that's get on the win. hump. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or if I don't have a lead at halftime, I'm only going to win 15% of the time. I mean, that, that is, yeah. I mean, that's like, damn, I don't like my odds here. <laughs> so anyways, but that, those are my thoughts. Calvin. Well, you mentioned the the three and out on the possession, which obviously can happen. We've also seen uh, maybe you want to take the ball first and then you uh, boot the opening uh, kickoff or receiving of the kickoff, something like that. I mean, all kinds of wild stuff can happen. And obviously just taking the football at the coin toss, you know, is not the only way to score first. You are allowed to get a defensive stop and then go score your first offensive possession as well. So, you know, none of these are like as constant as gravity necessarily. But as you were just pointing out there, pretty damn close. 85% of the time you're leading at half, you're winning a football game. That's pretty good. I guess maybe we uh, discover here, and this may not be breaking news to anyone, that outpassing an opponent could be the least important of these things. 66% winning percentage there. And obviously, uh, the wins that you have gotten for the most part this season, you have not outpassed the opponent and you've still found a way to win. So that may be the lowest ranking, at least of this collection of statistics we have here. And We'll just reiterate because I think it remains true. Statistics are for losers. There is no one thing where you say, hey, if we do this every time, we're going to win the game. Aside from, here's the one important statistic, scoring more points. There's expert analysis for you on this episode of Locked on Texas Tech. So this is not to suggest, hey, this is gospel. You do this every time. You're getting wins. But it is really interesting to see how these trend lines break down. And Chris, aside how many, from well, – well, okay, How many times – this year, have you actually outrushed the opponent? I, like I don't have that off the top of my head. Four of because, six. Because okay, because that's the one category you you didn't even outrush Arizona. Yeah, Arizona or Washington State. Those are the yeah. two you've been behind in that. Column. Okay, and and, and I, I don't. There's going to be a lot of these games where I'm not certain that you you may achieve that. Now, what you have is you have a really good runner and an opportunistic runner, but your quarterback's not going to really dabble in a lot of that Sh- short of short of you busting a, a jet sweep or something or an option I mean, play. <laughs> you, well, yeah, that's right. That's right. But, but, but Taj is going to get his, his one twenty five to one fifty. but that's kind of where it would seemingly stop. Whereas, I mean, West Virginia last week in Stillwater, they had two different guys and they ran for like 375 yards. They just like that, yeah. they, and their quarterback also plays a part. You're not really going to do that, so I can see where 
but but it doesn't make your your running game or or the what that part is playing in your recipe to victory any less important. But this is the stat that you may not. I mean, you, you know, you you may not factor in heavily in, but you still are majoring in it. But yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. But sure. you, you may you may not out, not outrush a lot of opponents, but that doesn't mean you're not trying to run the ball and. You're not trying to get yours. Well, and I would be curious. We don't have it on the screen here, but uh, that outrushing an opponent in a, in a lot of instances will uh, be working in tandem with time of possession and maybe how you're trying to dominate True. the football. And obviously we know that can impact your chances to win also. But it kind of seems like if you're not going to outrush an opponent, you better be doing heavy work in that turnover margin. You better be getting some takeaways and uh, winning that battle because obviously that's a very important one as well. But uh, aside from that lead at the half or the uh, turnover battle, I mean, you see it right there. If you are outrushing an opponent, you got a great chance to win a ball game. Uh, let's get to what Texas Tech has actually done in these categories. First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. And NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say you're watching a game, you get hit with a hunch, an instinctual calling. Well, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you're going to place your bets to keep up with everything going down in real time as you submit that slip. And right now, FanDuel is going to get you started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet that's right two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed with only a five dollar bet out the gate at fanduel.com uh, let's get to what texas tech has actually done in these categories and you kind of allude to it there the arizona game is the one that we'll look at that is a little bit topsy-turvy as far as what you don't do in these categories, but still find a way to win. Against Abilene Christian, the only thing you don't do is outpass them. You achieve everything else. Score first, you outrush them, you have a halftime lead, you win a turnover margin. We still know what kind of squeaking out win that was and taking some extra time in overtime. Washington State, you don't do anything but outpass them. And they didn't care because they ran for like 320 yards. So, yeah, feel free to chuck it around, boys. We're running for 300 plus <laughs> or whatever it was. But against Washington State, you don't do anything uh, other than outgame them through the air. Against North Texas, anybody want to make a guess? You checked every box. You did everything in that one. You were part of that 96-2 and two record when you are achieving all five. Against Arizona State. You do everything except outgain them through the air. You score first, you outrush them, you have a halftime lead, and you win the turnover battle. Against Cincinnati, you mostly did everything aside from outpass them. You score first, you outrush them, you do not gain more through the air. It was tied at halftime, so that's a push. That's why I say you mostly did everything, and then you win the turnover battle within that one. And then against Arizona, I guess the most interesting game so far as it relates to these things. You do score first. You don't outrush them. You don't outpass them. You have a halftime lead. And then, as I said in the reaction video, the short video at about 2.30 on Sunday morning, <laughs> following that ball game, your turnover margin was basically the, the, the story of the ball game. because, And it could have been for Arizona uh, in a more positive way because even for all the things that they had not done, settling for field goals, not getting in the end zone, uh, if they don't give up that final fumble, do they have a chance to win that ball game? I guess we'll never know, but... That one was the one that was really interesting, and I guess where you really did lean on the turnover margin uh, to overcome some of these other things that you didn't do. Yeah, it was the Arizona game that just got really weird um, because I think uh, <clears throat> I think that was definitely a game where you were trying to get a lead early. You were trying to and, – and then you did all, all that you wanted to, and it almost wasn't good enough. Um, it almost was not good enough. There's just something to be said about playing with a lead and having the other team chase you. And yeah. I think that's there's a little more stress there. There's a little there's just a little more to it. And maybe you take a lot of teams out of what they want to do to try to get to that point. And I heard Mike Gundy talk about this, you know, after Oklahoma State got hammered versus West Virginia over the weekend. He's like, and I think uh, you know, I'll tell you another example of, of a team that got up with a 14-3 to lead early and then loses in a lopsided manner was Baylor and Ames. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Mike Gundy said, he goes, we got down so far that we just totally change 
what are we even anything we wanted to do uh the time of possession in stillwater last friday was like 42 minutes to to 17 minutes or something crazy like that it is uh it is hard to win for some teams and i and i think that that applies in many ways to texas tech i don't think you are built to come back from 14 or 17 down with not much time left i'm not saying you can't but it just totally takes out of takes you out of what has been working to this point with uh, the the running game and the play action pass and all those kinds of things. Uh, I think that's the the trickier part. Now, you know, you you've gotten down before and been able to kind of you know uh, swing away because I mean, wasn't the uh, uh, the Cincinnati game was a prime example? But that's on a you got down really early with the whole game still left and then you're able to adjust uh, and, and, and punch back accordingly. Cause I think as soon as they went up 14, three, you immediately it's 14, 10. So you never really played the, you know, the extent of the game from behind. Uh, but it, it's just pretty, it's pretty crazy looking at some of this stuff and just kind of seeing how we're getting from A to B. The turnover thing is the one statistic that I would say, man, if you could give me turnover margin, you know, and like be really good in that, that supersedes everything in the, in the, in the deal. Yeah. I mean, it's just, agree. um, and it's not always that way, but that's just, uh, that's going to decide whether you win or lose more often than not. Uh, but, uh, the score first and, and the, the lead at the halftime thing is pretty well because Joey's record, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I think his record is really, really good when he has a lead at halftime. Yeah. Well, in the yeah. turnover margin thing, you can be talking about field position, like, hey, are you getting some short fields? Maybe getting a pick six or some free points for the defense yes. even. So that just covers mm-hmm. up for a multitude of sins. Um, you know, the kickoff conversation or the coin toss conversation is just going to remain an interesting one. And I, I don't know if it's a more old school approach to want to defer. That's the way I've always felt like it should be done. But uh, going back to arguably the most enjoyable era of Texas Tech football, I – Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Coach Leach always a give it to me guy? He wanted he wanted to th- theoretically an extra possession. Give me give me the give me the rock. Yeah. Uh, my guys are they're chomping at the bit. They're ready to come out of the let, let's go. You know, so yeah, I've got this script of plays on my tiny little napkin that I've got to get to here. So we need to like we need to go ahead and start crossing some of these off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that. It was a mindset, you know, yeah. and I think I think. Uh, you, you learn a lot about defensive minded coaches or analytics coaches or offensive minded coaches. But I think Joey has just kind of gone with a gut or a feel. And he's, he said this and we, we have, we have touched on this on the broadcast quite a bit during, during the radio broadcast, but he, he'll, he'll basically say, Zach, how good do you feel about your, you know, your, 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 your openers or your, some of the things that you've got. And whether you're at home or away, um, whether you feel like, okay, this is a team we need to get out in front of and make them play from behind because it'll change who they are. It's all kinds of dynamics. And that is the one thing where you can totally overthink it, think it to death. And then when you get up there, some sweet uh, tech fan flips a, a, a fancy you know piece of metal up in the air, and you may not even get to choose anyways. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that's, that's the reality of it. So, um, But I do think it's a bit of a – it's kind of like the – what I the first thing I thought was it's like okay, th- this is he's being more aggressive here, less aggressive on fourth downs. It's just it's just kind of mm-hmm. almost like it's flipped a bit, um, and I think it's kind of interesting uh, that, that you're. But this the, the score first and the lead at halftime thing that's real stuff, man. That is very real. Um, turnover margin under Joey McGuire, winning or tied? I believe you're fifteen and two. Uh, when you're scoring first under Joey McGuire, you're now 15 and four. When you own the lead at halftime under Joey McGuire, you're now 16 and two. So pretty lopsided in all of those categories. Whenever you're doing uh, and it, at least three of those five things, as I say, and every bit of that means take the ball first and be really good at putting some putting a touchdown up on the board early. At the end, and and, and we've seen whole, both this year, right? Kind of like yep. we saw some defer, we saw some. Let's go ahead and take it. Uh, curious to see what we. Uh, I've always been a defer guy. Me too. I'm like, man, put those other knuckleheads out there. Let, let's get the ball coming out of the locker room. You know, I mean, that that's just always and, – and then and then you try to work it out or, or if it would that you can kind of get the ball at the end of one half and the beginning of the other and just leave somebody else over there like, dang, man, I, I'd like to play too. 
Um, you know, <laughs> right? you know it's, you've seen that before. Yes. It's all about pressure, right? Like what the position you're putting the other team in. And a lot of that has to do with the first quarter, but a lot of that has to do with the beginning of the third quarter as well. You know, given however the, the second the, might have finished or what the, the first middle eight. Was. It's yeah, the middle right. eight. I mean, that's what was that uh, number six or seven on on that list that Joey walks around with. He's like, you know, and that's all they kept yelling out of the locker room the other day. Middle eight. We're still in the middle eight. And you clearly won the last four minutes of the first half. Didn't really do a whole lot in the first four minutes uh, of the of the second yeah, half, cool although eight. they didn't they didn't either. So overall, you you won that portion of the game. But yeah, uh, crazy. Uh, seven point plan to win, I think, is what Coach McGuire and his crew roll with uh, each week. We just gave you the locked on Texas Tech uh, five point plan to win. <laughs> a little more simple, not necessarily tailored to the opponent, but do with it what you will. Uh, Chris, before we get out of here, I want to get into this conversation that it re- as it relates to a national relevancy radar. First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Never sweat buying tickets to your favorite event again with Game Time. It's always a breeze using the Game Time app where you're going to find the best last minute deals. And I love being able to scout out a view from any seat before pulling the trigger. Of course, you're always doing it at the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, which means you can finish off that final brought. That final beer at your own pace at the tailgate because game time is the place to find last minute seats to any event. Game time gives you the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets, but not just fast, also secure and simple to use. So, right now, download the game time app and create an account and use our promo code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem our code locked on college for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. I want to get into this conversation that it re- as it relates to a national relevancy radar. And that's basically the way that I view the top 25. And as we sit here midway through Texas Tech's regular season, the Red Raiders have just now made their first entrance into only the receiving votes category. If you were unbeaten to now, you didn't lose in Pullman. I do believe you'd be a top 25 football team, but you're not. You did lose uh, in Pullman against Washington State. Then you go on the road and you win as an underdog. I think your first win as an underdog uh, this year against Arizona. So I believe, I may have this backwards, but uh, AP poll, coaches poll, you had like seven votes in one, eight votes uh, in the other. So not quite there, but you're starting to get a little bit of attention. But uh, I've seen some, you know, asking why Texas Tech is not winding up in the top 25 when you're the only program in the country, uh, power four wise, that has got wins exclusively against opponents still with a winning record. Now, clearly, a lot of things can still change. So, again, not telling you that that's to be treated as gospel or anything like that whenever it comes to the credentials. But you just look up and down the list of who is ranked right now and you kind of scratch your head i mean i think a four and two michigan team is a very bizarre inclusion at this point in the season you get beat by washington who got beat by rutgers and yada 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 you can talk about notre dame who i think is still hovering around just outside the top 10 you get beat by northern illinois oh and by the way the aggies got beat by that team to kick off the regular season this is the way i view it at this point in time these polls are still feasting off of preseason assumptions Now, some have been blown up to smithereens and you can't even pick a scrap off of it. A vulture would turn its head away from the carcass of the Kansas Jayhawks. There's nothing left there. But some others are still kind of like Notre Dame, I guess, are still sort of in this gray area or Michigan still in this gray area. Then you add some logo bias. If it's the Longhorns, if it is the Wolverines, if it's et cetera, we all know that impacts it. So how do you feel with all that context? I know you were well-versed in following college football for as long as you have. How do you feel about where the Red Raiders are sitting? Do you think that a top 25 vote or inclusion, not just a vote, but inclusion would be unearned at this point in time? Are we being ignored? How do you decipher what's gone down so far on this uh, national radar? In general, team, the, the, we weren't – teams way too early. Um, you, you don't really know, especially even more so now with the portal and everything being what it is, you don't really know what teams are going to be until, heck, I don't even know if we're there yet, but really early, late September, early October, and you kind of really get a feel for who, who uh, a team is. So 
what you just said is thousand percent accurate. So much of what you're seeing in the poll right now is based on what it was supposed to be in the summer when everybody thought they knew what was going to happen. And then it turns out, I guess we didn't really, Charlie, I think we were probably wrong on the, on the, on the one team. And then Billy was wrong on the other one and everybody was wrong in, in a lot of cases right. and because everybody picked Vanderbilt to beat uh, Alabama before the season started. Right. I mean, and That's then right. it's just not, not how it works. So it, 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 it some level it does factor in. I think it's going to factor in a bit. It's a, it's a PR campaign is what it is. Um, there was a time when this would have uh, triggered me that you weren't ranked or it would have bothered me and I would have been a little bit more outspoken about it. But at this point, I don't think there's a machine that could be built, be built big enough to measure my indifference on this subject from the standpoint of should they be ranked? Because I just know that if you can continue to win, you will be, it'll take yeah. care of itself. Um, and thank I, God I, for the playoff, by the way, because I think and, that and, impacts it, that I agree. And it does mean a bit more, uh, and, and it's ultimately not these rankings you're talking about. It's how the committee will, will rank it, but it's like the highest, the four highest conference champions. Because I've seen, I've seen some projections that it's got like uh, you know the Big Twelve champ being like the 11th seed in the 12 team playoff, and like Boise State being the fourth seed w- with the other bye, you know stuff like that. And and so, uh, yeah, I, I I don't disagree. So, but uh, I just. Let's just call it what it is. You you were you were off the radar before it was, before the, the season. Uh, ACU almost got you. You got a housed in your second game. Nobody really knows yet if Arizona Arizona State or Cincinnati are legit or not. I think Arizona had the most preseason hype there. Um, I don't you know they had a bad loss in Manhattan and a home loss versus you. We'll see what they go do at BYU. We'll go see what Arizona State does. Uh, in Utah and what Cincinnati does at UCF. And if those teams start to put together a bit of a resume, I think that only helps your situation out. But you you need to just worry about beating Baylor and then winning some of those road games that you still got left on your schedule and it will sort itself out. But uh, yeah. I saw I saw the, the stuff like you did. Dennis Dodds is like, why are they not ranked? And I've seen other people like frustrated or angry about it or voicing their displeasure. I certainly understand it, but I think there's a lot of reasons why. I used to be so much more frustrated by it whenever uh, uh, men and women in pantsuits gathered in a boardroom <laughs> and selected two teams to play for a national championship because a lot of that was, again, going to be based on the roads you had to travel to work your way up the rankings. And I know that the college football playoff ranking is different than these, and I'm so sure they never are impacted by these rankings <laughs> when they're coming up with their ranking. Sure. Um, but I used to be a lot more frustrated by it at that point in time because I am not one of those that's like, well, only two deserving teams every year. Clearly, there's a divide. You know, you can't yeah. find 12 teams that deserve to compete for a title. I'm not one of those. I think those people are so damn foolish. Like, who are you to think that you have the discerning eye to say that, oh, number two, you're deserving. Number three, no, nope, sorry, you didn't make the cut. Forget it. But we're out of those uh, times. We're getting into yeah. a playoff, and then we're getting into a bigger playoff. And so – some of these things don't quite matter as much, even though I know it still impacts seating. But you think about where you got to come from to start a year if you are unranked or if you did get preseason benefit of the doubt. Like Utah. I think Utah has played one team with a winning record they lost. And they're still hovering around 16, 17 again. But everybody crowned. everybody had them crowned before we even started. Yeah, it's yeah. picking off that preseason carcass, finding any scraps yep. you can uh, to still hang on to. But not up in arms about it at this time. I'm totally with you. You keep stacking wins. You're going to wind up where you want to be. And you know what? You know what else I think factors into this? And this actually play plays into the first part portion of the program today because we, we put all those percentages and, and data and everything uh, that we were talking about, score first, rush more, all that stuff. F- to this point, in the Big 12, 47% of these games are one score. Okay. Nine of nineteen, you 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 have participated in, th- in 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 three of those nine um, that that are one score games. All three of your wins. I think that at some level factors into your lack of ranking too. Because if you were, you know, if you were beating people thirty five to nothing, it probably would cause more of a stir. 
again, you and I are on the same page here. Take your style points, turn them sideways, and <laughs> stick them. Well, never mind. Okay, I could have kept going, but I'll, I'll stop. Um, but uh, but but we all understand h- how the dynamic there is because the pollsters that don't have time to watch every game, they do look at style points. They don't see the minutia of how you got from A to B, but it's like, damn, they beat them by 35 or by 42 or whatever it is, instead of like you're looking at a close win. But I'm here for the dub. I'll, right. I'll chomp them up uh, all you want. I'll, 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 I'll savor the dubs as many as you'll give me, man. And, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> In typical Jameis Winston style. Um, so <laughs> it tastes like crab legs, don't they? Um, <laughs> with, uh, but, but I, I think that data plays into the poll, uh, and all that stuff yeah. just as much as anything. True. I mean, I could just continue going down the list, picking on those. I don't like Ole Miss. What are you doing in the top 10? You lost to a team that lost to a team that lost to a team <laughs> that lost to a team that lost to Georgia state. If you want to trace that tree all through that, those steps, six degrees of Georgia state separation, <laughs> Mandy, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Ole Miss, and the rebels are still in the top 10. It's one of the most absurd aspects of college football. But again, thank God we are finally in an era where these polls and preseason uh, rankings will impact a pursuit of hardware. The least, not at all. I mean, we hadn't totally gotten rid of the impact, but we'll impact it the least. I think it's a great thing for college football fans. Chris, appreciate the time. As always, man, some uh, interesting stuff to consider and discuss on today's program. So uh, appreciate that. Enjoyed it. And we'll see you for the next one. Run the ball, win the toss, take the ball, score the touchdown. Uh, but make sure you go, go to the locker room when you get your orange slices that you got more points than the other guy. Um, <laughs> and, and just keep winning and then everything will sort itself out. That really sums up this episode. So with that, That's right. talk to you manana. <laughs> There's your cliff notes. Any football coaches uh, anywhere out there, feel free. These are open source cheat codes, so feel free to take those from Locked On Texas Tech. All right, appreciate all you guys being out there. Thanks especially to the everydayers for being there once again. Get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. Of course, one of the best ways to help us grow the show is to comment anything below, so thanks to those who continue to do that. And a big shout-out to the Matador Mob Insiders enjoying chopping it up with you day after day after day, night after night after night. South Korea, Vietnam, United States, anywhere around the world. Great to hear from you. If you are not one and you want to try it out, check out the show notes for the link there. We've got a link to a free 14-day trial. It's your direct line to Chris and myself. you got early episode releases. you got unique content for only Matador Mob subscribers. And, of course, you got the Matador Mob mailbag where you can submit your question every day week and we are still looking for another reason to bring up sydney sweeney on this week's mailbag so get busy guys all right appreciate the time as always thanks for being out there for chris i'm casey and we hope to see you back for the next round on locked on texas tech